Andrew Douglas here, founder and creator of the Piper's Dojo and of Dojo University. And we've got a great lesson here that you can learn in just under three minutes about the size of your grace notes and how it can affect the quality of your grips and tear lewith. So when you're ready, we're going to dive into another episode of Piper's Dojo TV. Okay, welcome back. If you enjoy this content or if you want to help us on our mission, which is to help Pipers everywhere get better and solve some of these key problems that they're having with just a little bit of logic and a lot of hard work, but uh, hard work's the fun part once you know, once you have a plan, once you have a game plan. If you like what we're doing, please help us by sharing these posts around. It would mean a lot to me and to our staff um, to be seen by more and more people. You know uh, the people out there better than even we do, so that would be great. So we're going to talk about the grace note size problem and how it can really uh, negatively or positively affect your low G movements uh, just by uh, having this solid understanding. We're going to be able to make it better. So grace notes that are too big. If I, were, if I play just some GDE grace note combinations, right? Here are some examples of, at least I'm uh, not very warmed up, but uh, some examples of what good grace notes should sound like. Right, C clean, crisp, and articulative, meaning that they give the rhythm to the melody notes. Right, lots of G, D, E grace notes, and they all sound very good. Now, I'm going to show you really quick. Um, if the grace note size is too big, it ruins everything. I'm going to do the exact same thing again but my grace notes are gonna to be too big and you're gonna see what the uh, negative impact is, ready? Right now, everything I played was exactly the same there. The only thing I changed was the size of my grace notes. Go ahead, listen back again. Um, the tempo's the same, uh, the finger work clarity's the same. What makes it sound sloppy and gross is that those grace notes are super big. Now, when we play grips and tear loaths, right? One of the big things that makes that grip sound sloppy is that the size of the grace note inside the grip, okay? There's a D grace note inside there, right? If that grace note is too big, it's gonna swallow up the low Gs on either side of it causing a really rough sounding grip. Now, let's shrink that grace note back down and you'll hear good sounding grips as the result. All I did was shrink that D grace note back down to size. Now we can have the same problem with terlewiths, right? And by the way, Pbrock terlewiths and light music terlewiths, it's all the same. Okay, grace note size has to be small. Okay, big, nasty grace notes that are kind of ruining those Taylor and grips. They're not, you know, I've heard worse, but that was pretty bad. Now, listen to the result of just shrinking those grace notes back down to size. Okay, grace notes that are small mean happy movements. So I want you to think about that. Your homework for today is to drill down into your own low G technique to make sure the grace note size is not too big. If you uh, enjoyed this lesson, be sure to check out our um, free checklists on how to perfect your grips, tear Lewis, and D throws, which you can click the link that you see in this video or in the post surrounding this video in order to get on, in on that free uh, training. So be sure to check that out. Um, you know, we want you to have that free material and we want you to enjoy it. So there you go. Grace note size, quick lesson, and how it can fix your low G technique. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode of Piper's Dojo TV.